Hello and Assalamualaikum everyone. My name is Miss Norbahira Muhammad Noor and I'm from SMK Kandis Bacho, which is in Kelantan. So today I'm going to talk about the introduction to 1119 stroke 1 and 1119 stroke 2, which is the code for the SPM English paper. Okay, I'm going to refer to 1119 as 1119 stroke 1 and 1119 stroke 2. All right. So let's go to the next slide. All right, so this is the outline of the show today. First, I'm going to talk about the max division for paper one, and then we will move on to max division for paper two. And of course, I'm going to show the types of directed writing, as well as, as, well as types of continuous writing. And further on, we will continue with sample questions so that you will have a bigger picture of what the question is all about. And lastly, a little bit of self-reflection. All right, so next, let's move on to Mark's division for 1119 stroke 1. So this mind map represents the Mark's division for 1119 stroke 1 paper. So as you all know and aware, there are two sections for 1119 stroke 1 which are Section A, Directed Writing, and also Section B, Continuous Writing. So, to make it short, let's refer to, D, uh, let's refer to Directed Writing as DW, and let's refer to Continuous Writing as CW. Okay, let's take a look at DW first. Okay, as you can see, the total marks are 35 marks for DW. So, 35 marks consists of three aspects. The first aspect is language. So you will be given up to 20 marks for language. Whereas for content points, there are 12 content points which carries 12 marks. And then for format, you will be given three marks. However, sometimes not all questions would give you all 12 content points. So in that case, what should you do? So for example, let's say the question gave you only eight content points. So that means you need to come up with your own four additional content points. So whatever it is, please bear in mind that you need to have a total of 12 content points so that you will be, so that you will be awarded with the total marks of 12 content points. So that is DW for you. So secondly, let's take a look at continuous writing or CW for short. So you can see that the total marks for CW is 50 marks. That's a lot. So make sure that do not leave this section blank. Okay, so next, let's take a look at mark division for 1119 stroke 2. I'm just going to touch lightly on this marks division for paper 19 stroke 2. Okay, for 1119 stroke 2 paper, there are four sections. Section A, Section B, Section C, and Section D. So for Section A, there are 15 multiple choice questions which carry 15 marks. Okay, so that means one mark for one question. Although it may look easy because there are choices of answers that you can choose, but then you have to bear in mind so that you use the correct grammar and use the correct language so that you can choose the correct answer. All right. For section B, there are 10 info transfer questions and this will carry 10 marks, the same as section A. One blank will carry one mark. So all the answers are in the uh, reading passage or maybe a poster that is given for the question. All you need to do is transfer the information from the reading text into the blank or maybe the table that would be given in the question paper. So one blank equals one mark. There are 10 blanks which would give you 10 marks in total. Okay, so for section C, there are two questions that you have to answer for section C. 
The first one is reading comprehension and another question is summary writing. So for reading comprehension, you just need to refer to the reading text to get the answer. Okay, so for reading comprehension, you will be given up to 10 marks. Whereas for summary writing, you will be given a total of 15 marks. Okay, all of the content points for summary writing, can, uh, you can take it from the reading text that would be given in the question. So it is fairly easy for you to get the marks. All right, and the last section is section D. There are two questions for section D, poem and also novel. So as you have learned in form four and also in form five, there are four poems that you learn in class. So make sure you are well versed in all the poems. And also we learn Sing to the Dawn by Ming Fong Ho for Kelantan. So for novel, you will be given 15 marks in total. So make sure you, are re make sure you really, really read the novel so that you can answer this novel question successfully. So that's all for Marks Division Paper 2. Okay, I'm going to move on to types of directed writing. Okay, so there are five most common types of essay that will come up for Section A. Okay, Section A, Directed Writing, DW. So the most common format would be speech, report, article, and two types of letters, which are informal letter and formal letter. So, let's take a look at the next slide. Okay, let's start with speech, or in other words, talk. So, what is the difference between speech and talk? So, a speech is a formal talk given to a large audience. It is usually made on special occasion such as welcome party or maybe a farewell. Whereas, a talk is an informal speech given to a small audience on a particular subject. So that is the difference between speech and talk. The names might be different, but the format is the same. So what is the format for speech and talk? Let's have a look at the next slide. So this is the format for speech or talk. So as usual, you need to have the greetings, okay, the introduction, and then you can write the body. And of course, you must have a concluding paragraph. So the format for speech, you need to have here, good morning, okay? Good morning to the principal, and then you need to tell the audience what is the topic for your speech or for your talk. And then at the end, in the concluding paragraph, you need to tell the audience, you know, something like, thank you for listening, or maybe you can tell them, thank you for inviting me, you know, as, you know, just a sentence, a simple sentence to indicate that is the closing for your speech or for your talk. So simple enough, isn't it? Three marks for format, uh, the greetings, and of course, the topic, and lastly, the ending. All right. So that is speech or talk. Okay, let's move on to report. So there are different kinds of report. You can write a report for a newspaper. Maybe you can write a report for club activities or even minutes of a meeting is also considered a report. So usually you would write a report in past tense. This is because you cannot report on something that has not happened yet. So you need to report using the past tense because you are telling your audience or the reader of your report of something that has happened. Okay, so what is the format for report? Let's take a look. So this is the format for report. Okay, first of all, if in the question, the question asks you to address the report to your principal, then you need to write at the bottom there, uh, sorry, at the top there, to principal and also your school name. And you need to have a title for your report. And then you need to have introductory paragraph as usual. And you need to have the body and also the conclusion. And lastly, to signify that it is a report, 
you need to have prepared by or reported by or maybe you can write written by and then followed by your signature and your full name in bracket all capital letters and if the position is mentioned in the question for example secretary then you need to write that too in your essay English club at the bottom so three months for format format make sure you have the address and also the title and then at the end reported by prepared by or written by so that's how you know this is a report all right good so far Okay, so let's take a look at the next uh, essay, which is article. So, what is an article? You can see article a lot, whether in magazine or maybe in newspapers. So, when you are writing an article, you have to make sure that to write accordingly to your audience. So, if your report is for your schoolmates, so the language used must cater to your schoolmates. Whereas, if you're writing for probably a bigger magazine or for your local magazine or newspaper, so the language has to be that accordingly to your audience. Okay, so how is the format for report, uh, for article? Let's take a look. So it looks like the format for report. The difference is there is no two principle, but the title is the same and you need to have the writer's name as well. Okay, so that's the only difference between report and article. For report, the title first, and then you write your whole essay, and then at the bottom, you would write reported by, prepared by, or written by. Whereas for article, the title, and straight away, the writer's name. That's the only difference between report and article. So this should be easy to remember, the format for report and article, because they look like almost the same. All right, so those are the format for speech, report, and also article. Let's move on to letters. Okay, first, let's take a look at informal letter. So informal letter, or we call in Bahasa Melayu, surat tidak rasmi. Okay, so an informal letter is written to your friends, or maybe your relatives, or your pen pals. So the tone is informal, because you are writing to someone that you already know. Okay, so what is the format for an informal letter? Let's have a look at the format. So the format is address, you need to have the address, and then you need to have the date, and also the greetings. For example, if you're writing to your cousin and your cousin's name is Sarah, so you need to write at the greetings, Dear Sarah. Okay, introduction, of course, body, and also conclusion. And at the end, you need to have the signature. So for informal letter, everything needs to be at the right. The address, the date, and also your sincerely and also your signature. So for informal letter, you can use your sincerely, you can use yours, or maybe you can just put simply love, or maybe your friend, your cousin, depending on the recipient of the letter. And of course, your signature. So for informal letter, you don't need to write the name at the top before the address, because the recipient already know that it is you who is writing the letter. Okay, so this is different from formal letter. Let's take a look at formal letter. What is the difference? So this is formal letter. Okay, so a formal letter is also known as business letter. Why is it called business letter? Because it is written when you are applying for a job or maybe to make a complaint or to place an order or maybe you want to inquire about services and etc. Okay, so that's the difference between informal letter and formal letter. For informal letter, your recipient already knows that it is you who are writing. Whereas for formal letter, the recipient don't know who is sending the letter. Alright, so what is the format? Let's have a look. 
Okay. All right. So what is the difference between informal letter and formal letter? So for informal letter, just now there is only one address, which is your address. Whereas for formal letter, there are two addresses, which are the sender's address at the top, and then at the bottom, that is the recipient's address, meaning the person that you are trying to send the letter to. So there are two addresses. Remember, on top, your address. At the bottom, the recipient's address. Okay. So adjacent to that recipient's address, you have to write the date. All right. After the date, you need to leave one single line and then you need to write the salutations. Okay, for informal letter, you already know the name of the person you're sending the letter to. Whereas for formal letter, you don't know who you are sending the letter to. So you need to write either dear sir, or maybe you can write dear sir slash madam, because you don't know the recipient. And then what is different between informal letter and formal letter is the title. So for a formal letter, since it is a letter of business, you need to tell the recipient what is your business of writing the letter. So if, for example, in this essay, the title is application for a part-time position. Okay. So of course, naturally, all the essays should have introduction and then the body and also the concluding paragraph. So what is different about formal letter is you need to put a number at the paragraph. So as you can see on your screen right now, there is a number. But strangely, it starts with number two. Don't worry, that is the format. So you need to put number two, and for, next, for the next paragraph, number three, number four, and so on, and so forth. Okay, for the signature, you need to use yours faithfully. Only yours faithfully should be used in formal letter. Okay, so after putting yours faithfully, you need to put the signature and then you need to put your full name in bracket. Okay, so this is how to write a formal letter. It looks complicated, but I'm sure if you practice every day, it will become it will become easier for you. So those are the formats for DW or directed writing. Okay, so for directed writing, ideally you should spend uh, around 45 minutes. Whereas for continuous writing, you need to spend more time because the question would not uh, provide you with content points. You would only be given five questions and then you need to choose one question that you feel confident to answer. And you need to write about that question for 350 words, about 350 words. All right? So for continuous writing, let's, let's have a look. So four most common types of essay that will come up for continuous writing, which is section B for paper one, are descriptive, reflective, argumentative, and also narrative. Okay, let's take a look at descriptive first. All right. Of course, before we start, Let's not forget, do not leave your section B blank because this carry 50 marks. So if you have trouble writing for section B, make sure that you see your teacher for consultation. And please, please, please attempt to answer the question for section B. And never ever make the decision not to answer section B. It is 50 marks, that's a lot. So don't forget to answer section B. All right? So let's begin. Okay, for descriptive, these are the sample questions. For example, for SPM 2013, uh, you are given a statement, truly Malaysian, and then describe what this means to you. And for SPM 2011, a famous person you admire. And for 2016, write a story about a time in someone's life when music played an important role. So if you like to read novels or you, lead, or you like to read um, descriptive uh, essays, then maybe you should answer this essay. And you need to know a lot of adjectives so that you can elaborate and you can expand further on your ideas. All right, so let's take a look at the next one. 
So for reflective, this is the sample questions. This question uh, came out in 2019. So the question is, if you had the chance to be someone else, who would you choose to be? Explain what would be good and what might, what might be difficult. So for a reflective essay, if you like to read maybe a memoirs or you like to watch biographical movies, then maybe this essay is for you. So you have to imagine to be someone else. So when you imagine to be someone else, you need to know what would be good, what might be difficult. So if you like biographical movies, if you like reading memoirs, then I think this is the essay for you. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Okay, so for argumentative essays, so this is where you have to agree or you have to disagree on the statement given. For example, for 2012, the question is, should parents give children more freedom? Discuss. Okay, for 2018, the question is, young people should be trusted to make their own decisions. Do you agree? And for 2007, you are given a statement. Teenagers today are only interested in entertainment. Do you agree? Support your opinion. So for argumentative essays, you need to pick a stand. You have to choose a stand, whether you agree or whether you disagree. All right? So that is for argumentative essay. If you, maybe you join the debate club in school, so maybe argumentative essay is your forte. Or maybe you like to read articles, maybe you like to read newspaper clippings, then maybe argumentative is the essay for you to answer in section B, continuous writing. All right, so the last type of essay. Okay, narrative. So if you like watching Korean dramas, if you like to watch Hollywood TV shows, then I think this essay, narrative, is the essay, the right essay for you. Okay, the sample question for 2013. There are two uh, narrative questions that came up for SPM 2013. The first one is write a story about being alone. And another question is write a story that ends with. Okay, so you are given quote, and so I became a better person. Okay, for 2019, write a story about two people who had an argument because one of them had lost a mobile phone, and your story with open quote, and they both realized how foolish they had been, end quote. So as you can see, as the year progress, the questions are getting more complicated. So you are given a situation. For example, 2019, write a story about two people who had an argument because one of them had lost a mobile phone. So you need to read and understand the situation before you attempt to answer the narrative question. All right? Okay. So, so SPM is not everything, but of course, SPM is the start to something. So try your best and don't forget, make good choices and be safe out there. All right, till we meet again.